Hi. So let's talk about variance. Okay. Let's pretend that we have a stock over time and that our stock does some sort of movement over time, right? It goes up, it goes down, it goes up a lot, it goes down a lot, it goes up, it goes down. And over time, you know, it does whatever it is that stocks do. All right. And we want to know what the what does it do on average, all right? So let's talk about what it does on average. On average, I'm going to create this line curve. It looks it's going to look something like this. This is the average movement of the stock over time, all right? This is the this is the mean. So this is the expected return, which is equal to the mean. You might see it as X bar, which is all of this is basically equal to the average return over time. Okay. So now the big question from the stock is how do we measure risk? Now, if this is the average or the expected return of the stock movement over time, and the purple line is the actual movement, then we can act. We, then one of the things we can do is measure. I wonder if this is a good color. No, that's a terrible color. One of the things we can do is measure the actual distance between one point, the actual point of return, and what it, we think it should be, or what the average is. So this distance, and this distance, and this distance, and both the high and the low, and the positives and the negatives, all of these give us an indication of how far away we are from the mean. And that's exactly what variance stands for. The variance of x or the variance of r here is equal to the sum, the sum of the actual return minus the expected return. And you can see a whole bunch of different notations here. Uh, this is divided by n minus 1. Don't worry about this. This basically means the total number of observations. Uh, so this gives us the idea of how far away we are from the mean, and this tells us how, f how many times we do it. And that variance is basically this idea, this line, this, this space. This is our variance, fast, 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 fast. So that's kind of one way to look at it, the depth or the width of the variance. Now, if I have another stock, I think I'm going to need some more colors. If I have another stock, let me use red. Let me find a flashier red. I have another stock that moves like this over time. Then its variance, let me red. Then its variance is clearly going to be wider than his brother. Man, that looks really messy. Let me do it again. So we have time over time, time over time. And we have, this one was purple. And we have one stock that goes up and down. So the variance of this one is relatively small, but the variance of his brother is much bigger. Does that make sense? So the difference, the width between this one, this line, this width, and the purple, and this width is much bigger. All right, this is this big, and the red is that big. So the red has a bigger variance. The variance of the red is bigger than the variance of the purple. Okay, as such, which one do you think is the riskier stock, red or purple? Red or purple, and so we, we probably are going to look at the red one and be like, you know what, I don't know when it's going to go up and I don't know when it's going to go down, but when it does, it's going to go up and down at a much faster clip than red is, I mean, than purple is. So red is the more dangerous stock. It is the more volatile stock, and it has the greater variance. So variance, in this case of red, is going to be equal to the square root of its standard deviation. You should remember some of this from statistics. Another way we look at standard deviation, or we say standard deviation, is to use the Greek letter sigma, and in this case, sub x, because we're going to call this stock x, or 
whatever, that doesn't really matter. And this is our measurement, our most common measurement of risk. So in some sense, the variance, the up and down movements of a stock give us an indication, a mathematical indication, whoops, a mathematical indication of what the risk is for the stock. And this is very important because in later chapters we're going to use it uh, to try to measure expected movements. And so if we go back to our chart, the original chart from the first micro lecture, I don't like that one. If we go back to our chart from the first micro lecture, and we see there's a line here where we have bonds and stocks, one of the ways we measure risk, or the way we measure risk is given sigma, which is the same as standard deviation, which is the same as the square root of the variance. And we, how do we measure variance? By the distance from the mean. And we measure over here the expected return either in dollars or more commonly as a percentage, and we call it expected return. And we've already talked about this graph, right? Bonds are less risky, stocks are more risky, stocks give greater returns than bonds, and the question is why? And the answer then comes back to this variance. If my red is a stock and my purple is a bond, then the red has a greater variance. And that square root of that gives me my standard deviation, which gives me my, uh, my sigma, which is the measurement of risk, and my stock A is going to be over here. Let me do it in red. My stock A is going to be over here, and my purple B is going to be over here. Therefore, A has a greater variance, therefore a greater standard deviation, and therefore a higher risk. This is risky. This is still risky, but it's safer. Okay, this is a low risk. Let me write it that way. This is a lower risk. This is a low risk. And this is a higher risk. As such, it's going to give me a lower return than my stocks that are going to give us a higher return. And that's the basic concept behind variance. I want to cover I'm going to cover one more topic before we go. And that is the systematic risk. Systematic, systematic versus unsystematic risk. And you guys have heard of diversification. Diversi diversification. Basically, what we're saying is that systematic risk is the risk of the entire market. It's also known as market risk. And unsystematic risk is the risk of a single firm. It's also called firm-specific risk. Specific. Firm-specific risk. And one way that we measure these two, market and firm-specific risk, is by looking at where the risk is, which we haven't done yet. So here I'm going to shift into a new curve, and I'm going to talk about what risk looks like this is my instead of putting the risk on the bottom i'm going to put the risk over here risk versus number of stocks and so why do we create diversified portfolios or how do we diversify portfolios we diversify portfolios by const by adding more than one stock to them and there's a variety of different stocks that we can do so i'm going to come down here purple again i'm going to come down here and i'm going to talk about you know, adding additional numbers of stocks, dot, dot, dot. One stock, two stocks, three stocks, four stocks, you know, 10, 30, however many stocks are out there. And there is some level of risk that I am never going to be able to walk away from. This is my systematic risk or my market risk. Systematic or market risk. Market risk occurs when the entire when something happens and the entire stock market moves. September 11th was a good example of a, of a systematic risk movement. Interest rate shifts are a good example of a systematic risk movement. It means that the entire portfolio moves, not just uh, one or two different types of stocks. That is different from unsystematic risk, which I'm going to label down here, up here, unsystematic risk, or firm-specific 
firm specific. However, I also want to construct a portfolio to try to eliminate as much risk as possible. So if I only have one stock in my portfolio, I'm going to have a very, very high level of risk. And as I add different numbers or additional stocks, my risk is going to lower and it's going to lower and it's going to lower and it's going to lower and so on. However, this curve tops off at this systematic risk line. I will never be able to eliminate systematic risk. I can, however, eliminate unsystematic risk. Or not eliminate completely, but I can lower it to as close to whatever this systematic risk percentage is as possible.